The traditional view of professional practice was that would-be professionals went to a university and studied a vocation where they learned a large body of knowledge. They then spent the rest of their careers applying that knowledge in the real world. Sean studied professionals in practice from a variety of professions. And he noticed uh, three major things about professionals when they're practicing. The first thing is that a lot of them function in zones of uncertainty, where the professional knowledge they've been acquiring at university is just not there. And he termed these the swampy lowlands of practice, areas where you didn't have evidence or formal book knowledge to guide you. He noticed that some professionals function better in these zones than other people. There were real differences in how people practiced. And he also noticed that those people who were effective tend to be able to improvise solutions to novel problems when they were actually working. Sean developed two terms to describe the behaviours he was seeing amongst professionals. The first he described as reflection in action. And in everyday speak, that's probably just thinking on your feet. Something unexpected happens when you're performing or practicing and you respond to it. And he felt that there were processes going on in the professional that were allowing them to respond to that new situation. The second he termed reflection on action, which is a conscious activity looking back on your practice to see if you can improve it. In the current uh, educational paradigm, practitioners are required to not only reflect, but to write down their reflections, to share their reflections for external scrutiny, and even to demonstrate adequate reflection in order to pass their exams and be deemed fit for independent practice. There are two main theories that offer a critique of reflection on action as the right way to organise postgraduate education. The first is the Claxton critique. Guy Claxton writes a lot about intuitive knowledge in practice. Whereas Schoen's theories, particularly of reflection on action, is a very cognitive theory. It requires conscious thought. Whilst much of what Claxton describes in how professionals function is not incompatible with reflection in action, it is when we come to reflection on action that the problems start to appear. He argues that a lot of reflection after the event does not appear in well-formed written versions, but it is perfectly possible to reflect in flashes, almost like a dream, just visual things that come into your mind or thoughts that you have on the bus on the way home from an event, uh, rather than this insistence that you articulate everything. And Claxton goes as far in some of his work to say that if you need to describe what you're learning, that will slow your learning down. Or another way of saying that is that the speed at which we learn is much quicker than the speed at which we can articulate what we learn. And I think anyone who's ever had to go from being a medical student to a house officer, or from being a GP trainee at the beginning of the year at the end, will realize that there's a huge amount to learn. And I would argue there is more to learn than you can possibly articulate that you are learning. The second critique is termed the socio-cultural critique. And it's best articulated by Etienne Wenger in his book, Communities of Practice. For Wenger, there are a number of dimensions to learning. He talks about learning by doing, learning by making meaning or reflection, learning as becoming, and learning as belonging. Becoming is what you embody. Belonging is how you fit in with a community of practice. The implication of this is that if you only focus on reflection, the doing and the meaning making, you may be ignoring the other domains which are equally important. How you become a different person and how you belong in a community of practice. The implication of that is that if you base postgraduate training around reflection, 
you risk doing so at the expense of participation. So if you're given a tutorial, uh, an extra tutorial, just to write reflections, that's a period of time when you're not engaging with the world of practice. So it's important to strike a balance between reflective practice or meaning-making and participation, which leads to becoming and belonging. There is a risk, if you take a purely sociocultural view, that you just, you just put someone to work, put them at the coalface, and they'll learn. And I think whatever the limitations of that may be in educational terms, it certainly isn't very popular with, with, with people who are learning. And from this has come the notion of the expansive workplace. This is essentially a, a participatory theory rather than a cognitive theory. But it suggests that would-be supervisors um, encourage participation not only in day-to-day doctor-patient interactions at the coalface, but that learners are allowed opportunities to participate in different communities. So, for example, uh, for someone in GP training, you might ask them to do a piece of work with a clinical commissioning group. You might invite them to lead a project. You would still keep a half-day release for them to meet their colleagues in an educational context. You might encourage them to do some research or you might simply encourage them to run a project locally. So whilst reflection is a normal human activity, it is not in itself, in my view, the solution to all the problems in postgraduate education. And I think any program built around reflective practice needs also to think about how people can get involved in a range of activities so that they become a GP or a doctor or a solicitor, whatever it is they happen to be becoming, and also that they belong in that community. And you can make that a, a more rewarding experience by looking at the expansive workplace whereby you participate in multiple communities, not just your own. Here are some questions that are intended to get you thinking about this subject in greater depth. How useful do you find the idea of a community of practice? What critical comments would you make about the ideas presented in this programme? There's further discussion of reflection and of social models of learning in our e-learning module on facilitating learning in the workplace. Go to faculty.londondeanery.ac.uk forward slash e learning and select the topic from the left hand panel. If you're a student on our postgraduate certificate course, you'll find references and suggestions for additional reading within the online resource folder. <laughs>